Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. I realize I'm supposed to be vacationing right now, but we're back home for a short while before going off on some more adventures. A friend sent me a question about some mysterious lanes that he had showing up in his Reaper project. I answered his question, but I thought this would also be a good time to make a quick video to show you a few additional options for recording in Reaper. Let's take a look. The project I've got open contains scratch tracks for a song I started writing last week. Not that it really matters for the scope of this tutorial, but if you'll look across the plugins that are currently running, you'll notice that with the exception of my guitar and bass amp sim plugins, this is using nothing but Reaper stock plugins. If you have a keen eye, you may notice one plugin alliance channel strip on my vocal track, but this track is muted. Let's take a listen to what would be the second verse in the song. Pay careful attention to the rhythm guitar on the right side, and you'll notice that my timing was a bit off. I've got the section already marked in my time selection, and I'm also set to loop. We'll go back to the beginning of the section and play. Okay, and that did not sound bad, but if you notice, my timing was significantly off when compared to the drums. What I'd like to do is re-record this section. That could be a bit challenging to do because it may be difficult to punch in exactly right there and get your timing just right. But since I've got my time selection already marked, I'll go down to my record arm button, right click, and change from record mode normal to record mode time selection auto punch. Just as that name would suggest, Reaper will only record during the time selection that I have marked. Now in this case, I want to turn off my loop, and I'll show you why momentarily. Let's take a look at the metronome. I'll right-click my metronome in the toolbar, and there's an option at the bottom for pre-roll. I've got mine set to pre-roll before recording for two measures. You'll be able to see what this option is checked for momentarily, and I'd like to also go ahead and enable my metronome so I can hear that. The drums are pretty well in time, but I also want to be sure to stay true to the click in case the drums need additional adjustment after the fact. Side note, I do want to make sure that you can actually hear the metronome as well, so I will make sure that my metronome is playing through monitor effects. And give me just a moment to grab my guitar, we'll get started. It's also important that I make sure that my guitar is in tune, so just another moment. Three hours later. Alright, we are in tune, so I'll go ahead and disable my tuner plug in here. The guitar that I'll be using today is a Schechter KM7 Mark II that's got a Keith Marrow Fishman Fluence pickups, so if that matters. And the amp sound is Sigma EX from Audio Assault. Tone sounds a little something like this. You'll notice that the guitar is only coming out of the right side. I've got my rhythm guitar panned hard right. Once again, my time selection is already marked and my record button is set for record mode time selection auto punch. I've got my metronome set up to play and I also have a two measure pre-roll. So now that I've got my playhead back where I actually want to start recording, once I press the record button, I'll be able to play into this by two measures. Let's get started. We're done. I'll save that, disarm my track, and put the guitar down. Be right back. 
Okay, if we go back and take a look at my rhythm guitar track and increase the height on that, we can see that what we just recorded over that time selection is in yellow. Now the purpose of the pre-roll, I'll zoom in just a bit and we'll back up, disable my snapping. If I grab this left edge and move it backwards, you see we've now got a crossfade. I can hold down shift and left click and drag on that crossfade to reveal that I actually recorded two measures before that. That comes in handy for being able to seamlessly blend in the previous take and the new take. Now even though I've had my record mode set to only record during this punch in, it actually recorded the entire time that I played. So if I scroll down a bit, I can grab the area between the part that I just recorded and the part that was previously recorded. And if I'd like, I can trim this out and use more of the new section than the old section. If I'd like to crossfade those together, I can just grab the left edge of the next section or the right edge of the new section and overlap it ever so slightly to give me the crossfade. And once again, I can hold shift and left click and drag over the crossfade to make sure that those blend appropriately. Let's disable the metronome and go back and listen to this and see if it sounds like it's in better time than it was before. If we take a look at the section right here with the crossfade, and I'll solo the guitar so we can make sure, in context it sounded to me like it blended from the new take into the previous take seamlessly. Let's see if we can hear any glitches in that section. And that is precisely what we wanted to have happen to where it is no obvious differences in the previous take and the new take other than the timing is better. Granted, the timing could still stand to be tightened up a little bit, but I can always go back and record over this section as many times as I'd like. You may also notice that this is currently showing take three of three. I can click on options and show all take lanes, and we can see the three passes that I've currently made on this. If I'd like to create a comp from the three parts, I can select any point in time and place a split and choose a different take to use for that section, and use the same method that we did before to take our crossfade to overlap the sections and make sure that they seamlessly flow one into the other. I'll undo that for now. I actually like my third take best out of each of these. So I'll go ahead and collapse my take lanes by pressing Control L, or you can go back through the menu to Options and Show All Take Lanes, and I think I'd like to stick with this for now. As you can see, Reaper gives you plenty of options to record as many takes as you need to get a part right, and you've also got different record options to help you to punch in seamlessly. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me A Coffee, I like coffee but it's really hot today, or the Patreon link below. YouTube has also unlocked a Super Thanks option that you'll see below this video. You can use that as well to leave a one-time donation and have your comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Don't forget to check out my drum editing and reaper course on ProMix Academy, and also check the link in the description to join us on Discord. We'll see you next time. I really hope nobody feels intimidated by my incredible physique. I should probably put a shirt on before recording or something.